What's up guys? Earth first, space later. Here again. Why? Because the truth of our world so much more important than never, never land. I want to say thank you to the to everybody that has, has watched any of my videos. I don't uh, I don't have many yet, many subscribers, but the few, I thank you, I love you, appreciate it. Uh, I came across this subject um, a lot later than most people did that have really been researching it. I spent the last few years basically not even uh, watching TV, not even using the internet, nothing, just... Um, I rejected a lot of that for a long time and uh, just based on personal choice and financial situations combined when I finally got back uh, hooked up to the modern world and the internet um, it didn't take you know it took a little bit of time but not too much I came across this subject of flat earth started looking into it thought it was a joke and I realized that there were people in in this uh, community that weren't joking at all. So, just like everybody else, I set out to prove it was retarded. Guess what? So, um, my last video was on predictive programming and, and March Madness 2020. Who's going to win, truth or fear? Truth being really the ultimate. Um, truth is the, the truth is the ultimate uh, the factor that we can't. There's no. The only reason that we don't know the truth is because part of it is hidden, or that we're being confused or divided about what the truth is, and we probably always will be. At least. Uh, while we're alive in this lifetime uh, unless we have some kind of like cosmic global disclosure um, but even then even then we don't know we don't know what's on the other side we all we're all subject to uh, life and death and the process that that involves again unless something crazy happens and uh, and it changes but um, the things that are out there in the sky and in the uh, in the firmament or the heavens or whatever we want to call it you can call it whatever you want but those things out there they're not for us to get to or experience people think they're going to go to Mars if we were going to go to outer space we would already have hotels on the moon we went to the moon 50, 60 years ago whatever like we can't go back now? Give me a break. And it's crazy. Um, they say we lost the technology. Do you realize how financially lucrative it would be to be able to take people to outer space and let them stay on a lunar hotel? How much money people would be willing to pay for that? How much money people would be willing to pay and how much people would be interested in seeing the footage that you could take from the moon back to the earth I mean you think about people that want to go to the beach to photograph the ocean or they want to go to the jungle to photograph the jungle the animals the wildlife who wouldn't want to go to the moon and photograph earth and if you don't think that the government of the world would be willing to charge anything they could for us to be able to do that you got to be crazy so instead they just steal 60 million dollars a day of our taxpayer money that they could probably make if people could go to a lunar hotel 
but the vacuum of space doesn't make sense. It's too dangerous. It violates the law, second law of thermodynamics, and it just it just doesn't make sense. So here's what I wanted to here's what I wanted to throw out. This will be my last video for the day. I'm trying to get a few in here before I got a long rest of the work week. Um, so. Again, going on with predictive programming, guys. This is the this is what they're doing. And of course, all the haters I'm gonna get are gonna come on and say, I've been programmed by the flat earth. Um I, of course I just expect it now. So but I want to talk about real quick Peter Pan. Peter Pan is PP. PP could be predictive programming, paid programming. Um because you had, you know. When Peter Pan came out, you had to go pay to see it, but it's programming. So let's think, and I don't know if anybody has um, broken this down like this. Probably, I just haven't looked. I've, I'm sure that Peter Pan has been broken down, um, and how it's it's programming. So this is just my own opinion of what Peter Pan possibly could be. And I welcome comments, disagreements, um, or any kind of like similarities uh, or additions to my opinion. And, and I'm going to try to keep this short. So, uh, but Peter Pan, if you think about Peter Pan, uh, he he, well, the main thing that Peter Pan does is he comes to a window and he convinces children to follow him out into the sky to a place called Never Neverland. Which obviously um, is in, uh, it's representing the idea of space, outer space, the, and it's the place that adults can't go. Right? It's only for kids, and you have to use your imagination to go there. You have to use your imagination to see what's real. So it's double think. It's double think, double speak. Um, adults aren't allowed. And you have to pretend. And guess what? Once you get, once you're at Never Neverland, I remember watching the movie Hook with Robin Williams. And if you remember, it wasn't until Robin Williams started to pretend that everything actually started becoming real. This is reverse psychology, guys. They're telling us that we have to use our Santa Claus beliefs <laughs> to understand the real world. And they're tricking us. So, uh, and in that movie, you know, you've got you've got peer pressure from the other kids to conform and be accepted. And Robin Williams, he's the adult, and he's questioning everything. And he is he is shunned, he is made fun of, and threatened. And it's not until he goes back to being a child and adopts a childlike way of thinking. That he's accepted again, part of the group, and he can see reality. But this is the opposite of what's true. When we grow up, we eventually get to a point where we let go of childish things that keep us from thinking clearly. This is programming, guys. The place that adults can't go. Never, never land. But the kids... Can be there forever. So, Peter Pan. Who's the bad guy? Captain Hook. He hooks you in. And he traps you in Never Neverland. He tricks the kids. He convinces them to stay in Never Neverland. While they just believe that where they are is the best place on earth or wherever they are that's this is just the best place to be home their home is not important earth or their heart is not important they're supposed to ignore it he convinces these kids of this and also captain hook hates time because why because in Never Neverland, time doesn't exist. Time slows down, or all it just stops. He hates clocks, 
any side of a clock, he will crush it. He will smash it. Time is his enemy. Why? Well, because he's hypnotizing these kids. He's using hypnosis to tell them not to worry about time or anything like that. Because time is what we have to operate in our reality. We're only here for a certain amount of time, guys. You're born and you die. You can't ignore that time is limited here. And you have to make decisions in your life as to what's important and who you spend your time with and how you focus your energy. And if we get distracted, this is what happens to people. We get distracted and before you know it, time is gone. Those relationships that you could have had, you don't have them. You missed them. You missed out. You missed out on all those relationships that you could have had that were precious. And we all do this. I'm guilty of it too. But now I'm thinking about these things like, oh my gosh, all of the things that the world wants me to think is important isn't. The time that we have here is precious, guys. It's precious. It is absolutely invaluable. And Peter Pan is telling you that time doesn't matter. When Peter Pan comes back at the end of the movie, he's horrified because Wendy is old. He sees her and he's like scared. He's, he's un... Just... He can't believe it. He's shocked. The person that he cared about the most in his life, he abandoned for Never Never Land. And when he came back, she was so old, he had no more time to spend with her. How sad is that, guys? They made a movie about this a few years ago to take the Peter Pan as we were kids a couple generations ago and they made another movie about it to reinforce this idea as adults. That movie was called Interstellar. Matthew McConaughey had to go out and save the world because the Earth, the Earth, again, not, the Earth is not worthy. The Earth is not worthy of us living here, being here. Something's wrong with it. It's poison. There's something that's happened to it. We've got to find another place to live. This earth is not worthy of our inhabitants. This is what they're beating into you and programming you with. So, Matthew McConaughey has to form this little dream team and they have to go out in outer space to find the solution, to find the answer. Well, they do that. Guess what happens? They go out, they experience, <laughs> it's, this is funny guys, this is, they, what do they use, what, did, what magical force do they use to tell you that time is of no con, it, 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 that time, well no they tell you that time is a consequence because they show it to you at the end of the movie. But you don't get it. Like, we don't pick up on this stuff, but they put it right in front of you. That time is of consequence. Time is of consequence. And you know what they use to tell you time is of consequence in the movie Interstellar? Gravity. Gravity, they use gravity to show how time is so important and you don't even know it. You don't realize it. Because at the end of the movie... When he's trying, he's banging on those walls. When he's looking at his daughter, and his daughter, he sees his daughter in there, and he doesn't want to leave her. He regrets leaving her from that that when she was that little bitty girl, right? He regrets it. He understands immediately the importance of time because time is limited. We only get a little bit of it, and he wishes he could have been there with his little girl. And when he gets back. She's old and gone. She's older than him. And it's over. He missed her whole life. And that's Peter Pan. They programmed us with it back then. They programmed us with it with Interstellar. 
they package it up and they make it look cool fancy trendy and they want you to believe that those places that they're going to try to figure all this stuff out is something where we can actually go there's no science that has proven that we can go out there without without NASA telling us that that's the case and math NASA and math trying to explain orbital mechanics and things like that which I could do if I wanted to create a fantasy world like J.R.R. Tolkien in the Lord of the Ring who made complete languages for his movies and books I'm sorry books that got turned into movies but they weren't real guys they were fantasy so We've got, to, we've got to understand, guys, time is precious. We don't, have, we don't have forever. We don't get it. We're only going to be here for a limited time. And they, they want us to believe that all the stuff out there is something that we can attain. And we're literally letting them program us and fantasize about this stuff. Poison us with the food the water the slavery of having to of the having to work the the, the fiat money um, the banking systems all of it we're they're distracting us our entire lives we are distracted and we are divided as soon as we realize that we don't need these people anymore that we don't need politicians anymore then we won't need them we won't have to use them that's the power guys the truth, just like I said in my last video, the truth is realizing that we are not beholden to anybody but God. We don't have to accept what other people want to tell us is the truth if it doesn't resonate in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, and if it doesn't add up to our observable world phenomena that we can explain through the scientific method so many things that they want to tell us are true cannot be explained by the scientific method so we don't we don't have to bow to them anymore guys we don't we have to be done with this and this is what we're doing this is what this little globe is it's the repudiation of their so-called power over us truth has been hidden and the thing that I've noticed is that the people who don't believe in God have the hardest time changing their mind about the model of the world heliocentric versus geocentric you cannot change what the earth is it is what it is you can't change it it's always been what it is so which one's right but I've seen people that have a problem with the idea of God will cling to heliocentrism like it's like it's just their like it's their God they don't that's what they don't understand heliocentrism is their God and they say they don't believe in God but heliocentrism is their God the world was created guys it's a beautiful and I don't know what's I don't know what else is out there past our world or what we can see whether it be on the plane or in the sky we don't know it's not for us to know this is not a realm of understanding everything we can know we can research and we can figure out everything we we can possibly figure out but there's certain things on this plane planet plane realm that we're just not meant to know so we have to understand that and accept that we can't go to the stars and take samples 
and say, oh, this is what this is. That part of the sky is not meant for us. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Love you. Sorry, I went a little longer than I thought, but I appreciate anybody that views this video. I appreciate it so much. I love you. Um, any comments are welcome. Any hate is welcome. Bring it on. I don't care. Um, Earth first, space later. Peace.